I hope you had a chance to see my previous video on the performance of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 where I compared it to previous generations of the Snapdragon 8 series. In this video I want to compare it to the performance of the A15 and the A16, that's the two processors that you find in the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, let's dive straight in by looking at what phones we're gonna be using here to compare. So at the moment, here we are in uh, almost in December 2022. There aren't any consumer devices out yet for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. They will be really, really soon. But for this video, we're gonna be using the Qualcomm reference device. That's a device that Qualcomm themselves make to demonstrate the technology. And of course, we're gonna be using the uh, iPhone 14 from Apple, which has got the A15 Bionic and then its bigger brother, the iPhone 14 Pro, which got the A16 Bionic. So a quick look at the specs of these devices. They're very, very different. So Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has an octa-core processor, one ARM Cortex-X3 at 3.19 gigahertz, then two Cortex-A715s at 2.8 gigahertz, then two Cortex-A710s at 2.8 gigahertz, and then three Cortex 510, there's a one plus two plus two plus three set up a cover all of this in my Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 video. Whereas the A15 and the A16 are hexa cores, so you've got two high performance cores, that's the Avalanche in the A15, the Everest in the A16, and then four uh, power efficiency cores, Blizzard in the A15, Sawtooth in the A16. When it comes to the GP, we've got the Adreno 740, which of course got ray tracing in it. And then when you come to the Apple, you've got a five core Apple GPU, and they don't give us really much more detail than that. No ray tracing. When it comes to the caches, we know that Apple invests a lot of money in putting in lots of caches and the way they design their CPUs are designed to take advantage of those large caches, prefetches, memory bandwidth, all that kind of stuff. So you've got eight megabytes of L3 cache in the SD uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, where you've got 12 megabytes of L2 cache for the performance cores, four megabytes of L2 cache for the efficiency cores, and 32 megabytes of system cache uh, for the, this is for the A15. When it comes to the A16, they've reduced the amount of system cache down to 24 megabytes. Four megabytes res remains the same for the efficiency cores, but now 16 megabytes for the performance cores. So again, upping that L2 cache there. And again, the design uh, takes advantage of those large caches. When it comes to uh, machine learning, we've got the hexagon uh, processor inside of the Snapdragon. That's got fused scalar tensor and vector processors built into it. Supports mixed precision uh, int 8, int 16, and it now also supports uh, int 4. Int 4 itself gives you a boost uh, in machine learning just by using it. And for Apple, we know there's a 16 core neural engine. Again, not much more details that Apple give about what it can and can't do from a technical point of view. They give us some performance numbers, tops and things, but really uh, not very useful. Looking at the video codex, really what I wanted to point out here was that the Apple devices support ProRes, as well as H.264 and H.265, whereas the Snapdragon 8, of course, 264265, Dolby Vision, and a AV1. So if you're thinking of that AV1 is in your future, a future proofing, then it looks like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is the way to go there. All three devices use uh, Snapdragon's uh, 5G modems, X65 in the Apple, X70 uh, in the uh, uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, Wi-Fi 7 ready, uh, the Snapdragon, Wi-Fi 6 uh, in the uh, Apples, and LE Audio support uh, in the Snapdragon there. And what do we get for manufacturing process? Well, they're TSMC 4 nanometer, uh, TSMC 4 nanometer for the A16, so they're kind of on par. And we've got the second generation of the five nanometers, the N5P uh, for the A15. Now some caveats before we get into numbers. Yes, this is about peak performance, not about sustained performance, not about thermals. I am planning to do a sustained performance video once there are consumer devices available with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And yes, I will also be comparing it to other processors like the Dimensity 9200, both Apple and the Snapdragon, again, when consumer devices are available. And just in case you didn't know, there is more to a smartphone than just the peak performance. You've got to think about the ecosystem, the camera, the battery, and so on. I'm aware of all those things, but let's look at the peak performance. 
So starting off with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, here are the Geekbench 5 scores. This is CPU only, 1,489 for single core, that will be the Cortex-X3, 5,178 for the multi-core, that will be using all those other uh, cores that we just listed there a, a moment ago. So how does that compare to the iPhone 14 with the A15 Bionic? Well, in single score, the Apple there is still the leader, 1,696 compared to 1,489. So clearly the winner there. However, because we're talking hexacore versus octacore, up until now, Apple was able to even just with that hexacore keep uh, ahead with the multi-core score. But now, no, clearly 5,178 for the Snapdragon, 4,742 for the A15 Bionic. What happens when we throw the A16 Bionic into the mix? Well, here we can see an even greater single uh, core score, 1,870. So clearly much, much more uh, higher performance compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. However, when you get to the multi-core, it is better, 5,474. Uh, but it's uh, the, it's into the 5,000s now with the Snapdragon. So it's catching up, but still the A16 there, clearly the winner. Before we dive any deeper, do let me remind you, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type email address, no spam, only the newsletter. Now, when it comes to GPU, things are very, very different. Here we can see 13,596. This is for 3D Mark Wildlife for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Under 10,000, in fact, under 9,000, uh, 9,900 in both cases, there, 9,800, 9,883, 9,745. And in fact, if you do the calculation, it's a 37% uh, increase there in performance for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So clearly the GPU doing a much better job there and obviously supported by that CPU. So which process is the winner? Well, the peak CPU performance, clearly the A16 offers the best single core numbers. The Snapdragon 8 beats the uh, 8 Gen 2, beats the A15 in terms of multi-core scores. However, the A16 still comes out top, especially considering it is a hexa-core processor. For peak GPU performance, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 offers the best frame rates, etc. by a significant margin, 37% as we said. So which device should you buy? Should you buy uh, an Apple device or should you buy a device, uh, an Android device with an, uh, a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2? Well, it's more complicated than just peak performance, as I've already mentioned. Which ecosystem are you already invested in? Wait to see what features come in Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 consumer devices and then consider your UK use cases, social media, photography, photography, games, all of those, and then pick the device that ticks the more boxes for you. Okay, now you've seen the numbers, please do tell me in the comments below, does that influence your decision? Will you switch from Android to Apple? Will you switch from Apple back to Android? Are you planning on getting a Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 phone? Please let me know. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.